the side scroller. A classic game type in which the scenery around your character scrolls as you move side to side. Popularized by Nintendo in 1983 with the Mario Bros, the side scroller stuck around, featuring itself in countless games throughout the years, including Kirby, Donkey Kong, Cuphead, and more. Developing grade A side scrollers that you can sell for $60 a piece is no easy feat, but creating a basic working version is probably a little easier than you think. Nani? Creation of the side scroller starts with a character and scenery. The scenery of the game is either illustrated by hand prior to its insertion, or it is generated on the fly with code to create a more randomized effect. No matter which version you choose, it's important to note, with a side scroller, your character isn't actually what's moving. It's the background of the scene that is scrolling to give off the effect as if your character is moving. For our game, I'm going to illustrate this scenery by hand. This way I can move platforms, enemies, and objects around as needed to create the exact level architecture I'm going for. But before any drawing takes place, it makes sense to code the general functionality of our game. Having some experience with physics engine development in the past, I created a player object with what's really just a circle, then added gravity and a stopping point so the player never actually falls through the ground. This is definitely boring AF though, so I added a few JavaScript event listeners that listen for whatever key you're pressing to activate movement across the player's X axis. He go right, he go left, and what do you know, he even go up with a quick burst of acceleration added onto his Y velocity. The basics are added into the game, but this is also yawn worthy and is not really a side scroller. Remember, with a side scroller, when we move our player, we need to move the background scenery to give off the illusion as if our character is moving. So I created a simple platform, which is really just a jank canvas rectangle. Then in my animation loop for every frame, I calculated the Y distance between my player and the platform. If the distance was any value, 0 to 1, then I stopped the player's Y velocity completely, giving off the illusion as if you were standing on top of the platform. I added some guards in there for the x-axis to make sure this effect could only take place if the player was actually on the platform, and with that, I had a basic platformer. Okay, so now that this was already destined to be a top seller, I figured, hey, game functionality is pretty much done, right? Well, might as well move on to the fun part with illustration and animation. Now, it's no secret that I'm a developer, not so much a video game illustrator. Nevertheless, my mantra has always been, if you want to get good at something, then just go and do it. So using some NFT artists I admire as inspiration, I drew out my own Mario, uploaded the drawing to Illustrator, and used it as a stencil to create a vectorized version I could use for animation. Getting Mario to move in the game requires what's known as a sprite sheet. Basically a comprehensive image file that contains all of your game image assets. By loading one large sprite sheet, you don't have to load or reference multiple assets at a time, you just load one, then render a specific location on it to obtain the image you're looking for. So to get Mario moving, I knew I needed to create some sort of running animation. Now thankfully, from making these videos, I have some experience with motion graphics and animation, so I kind of knew what I was supposed to do here. By importing Mario into After Effects, I used a rigging tool called the DK tool to create bones and joints which react with one another whenever part of Mario's body is moved. And thankfully, the DK tool comes with a running animation preset, so all I had to do was click a button, apply it, and I had a near perfect running animation ready to go. I plopped my animation's frames into a sprite sheet generator and voila! Finally, I had what was required to code a running animation into my game. So by importing the newly created sprite sheet as a JS module, I rendered it onto the 2D canvas, replacing the beloved circle object as our game's new hero. Now this, this just isn't right. To show only part of the sprite sheet at a time, we'll need to utilize four additional arguments with the canvas's draw image function that tell the canvas render where to crop the image at any particular point in time. By moving the crop marks to a different portion of the image for each frame that our game loops through, we successfully created the illusion of a running Mario using no other than a sprite sheet. I created a few more animations to cover the different movement states that Mario might be in, and with that, Mario was finally, truly alive. But damn, did I really make it this far and forget the scrolling part? Creating the illusion of a side-scroller starts with preventing your character from moving past a certain point. 
I figured the middle of the screen would be a good place to add this barrier so that I could see a good majority of the level ahead. And once Mario touched this invisible barrier, I added in some code that selected all other objects within my canvas and translated them slightly based on how long I was holding my right arrow key. On release, I stopped all movement and the illusion of the side scroller was successfully implemented. With this, we have a basic game, but there's not much fun navigating a course without any obstacles. So, meet the Goomba, a Koopa Kingdom badass whose mission is to destroy your future hopes and dreams. I created the Goomba with a simple JavaScript object that was destined to always move left on the screen. With a simple collision detection formula, I calculated whether Mario was touching the Goomba from either its side or top. If the top, well, rest in peace, Goomba. But if the side, well, rest in peace, Mario. I went back on over to Illustrator and created a number of assets, piecing them together to construct a full-fledged level. And once I had something I was satisfied with, I began importing the pieces into the game. I quickly realized coding physics with a guess and check method, as I've been using, is really going to slow me down. So to fine tune my object's movements relative to one another, I installed a small slider interface that would allow me to change properties such as object velocity, real time. Being the scatterbrain that I am, I eventually found out that my game wasn't going to work very well on different screen sizes. As a result, I limited my canvas to a fixed width and height, ensuring I maintained the 16 to 9 aspect ratio I've been using to develop with. This threw my game's artwork off a little bit, but all I needed to do was size it down in Illustrator and re-export it. A little extra work, but nothing too bad, even gives me a little extra space to manage the level in Illustrator. I meticulously placed all of the objects in their corresponding spots, replacing platforms with landmasses while adding a block object for jumps that require a little more precision. I'm really liking how this is looking so far, but we're still missing a piece of important functionality. Ending the game whenever you fall off the course. Coding this, thankfully, was much simpler than coding the Goomba. All I did was calculate the distance between Mario and the bottom of the canvas. If the distance was less than zero, I simply called my game's init function, which would reset the game with all objects placed in their original position. With a restart game function in place, it was time to add a win scenario for making it to the very end of the level. By separating the flagpole's flag from the actual pole, I was able to animate the flag downwards when Mario touched it. I could declare this as complete, but what fun would a side scroller be if you didn't get the pleasure of watching Mario slide down the pole? Here, whenever Mario touched the pole, I simply set his X and Y velocity to zero, changed his sprite sheet to a rudimentary pole grab image, then animated his Y position downwards until he hit the bottom. There I took away user control, then forced Mario to run right, just as if he were in a real Nintendo game. And for the hell of it, I decided to code some dynamic fireworks in the background to help celebrate such a large victory. The last thing I wanted to add to complete a V1 of the game was a Fire Flower power-up. The Fire Flower consisted of a simple animated sprite placed in a singular location on the game map. I could activate the appearance of the Fire Flower on a block hit, but that'll be a job for the future if I decide to pursue this further. Using another collision detection formula, I activated a portion of code that enabled Mario to shoot fireballs whenever a user clicked on the screen. I duplicated Mario's current sprite sheets, then changed the color of them so a player could tell when the power-up was active and when it wasn't. It wasn't until Mario would get hit that I would deactivate the power-up and send him back to his original state. Using the same particle physics I used for the fireworks and fireballs, I implemented a Goomba explosion effect for fireball hits and Mario squashes. It definitely added a nice bit of flair, and I thought at this point I should be ready to add some music and sound effects to call V1 complete. So with the help of a sound site I subscribed to, I found a couple of sounds, imported them into my game, and then used a JavaScript audio library called Howler to play them whenever a corresponding action was taken. And although I'll never forget my beloved Mario, I had to let him go, simply because I didn't want to get sued or copy strike by Nintendo at any point in the future. I swapped him and his animations out with the space character I used in the beginning of this video, and now I'm finally ready to present version one of the side scroller.
depending on how this video goes, I might do a continuation with fine-tuned physics, Koopas, and flying functionality, but for now, I'm happy to call this game somewhat complete. If you're interested in an in-depth course for this topic, let me know in the comments. And be sure to check out chriscourses.com for more game and web development related courses. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.